clergy in the house today. Somebody said, why is he sitting down? Well, I have a torn MCL and a heart in it. Pray for me that I get the courage to go get the surgery. Because I want nobody to cut on me. Amen. Amen. And that's all the saints that they're praying for. <laughs> Thank God for you today who are here that make up the body of Christ. Amen. You know that you are an amazing dude. Did you know that God loves you and he calls you the apple of his eye? Amen. And did you know that God wants to exalt you and place you in positions of life and places that you never dreamed of? Amen. He wants to take you beyond your day today and plant you in your tomorrow in a garden that you never witnessed before, Brother Martins, and a place to where he can use you like he's never used you before. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Today I want to talk about the name of Jesus. Alright. Okay, alright. <laughs> Look at your name and say, neighbor. Neighbor. What is in a name? What is in a name? And for a theme, I want to use this power. Power in the name of Jesus. She would raise your hand so she can know you can know who she is. Right. Amen. Amen. I did that for a reason. She carries my name. Yes. And to way, the way to identify her if she walks in the room is by her last name. Yes. Any other Johnsons in the house, raise your hand. And if you look around, throw your hands up. Those who carry my name. Amen. So that my offspring can't carry anyone else's name. Ah, right. I don't have to preach anymore. But my own name. Yes. Amen. Robert Johnson Jr. Brittany Johnson carry my name. Yes, Amen. What is in the name? What's in your name? I and mean, then we have parents today who don't think and they name their kids anything. Oh my God. Yes. Names have value. Yes. Yes. Names mean yes. certain things. Yes. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not naming my daughter Water. <laughs> yeah. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah. I'm not naming my daughter Aquanetta. Yeah. I'm not naming my son just any old thing. I'll never call him bad. I wouldn't name him heir because they don't mean or represent the things of God. Yeah. Amen. I need you to understand everywhere in the Bible when someone had or were in the presence of God, he changed their name. Yeah. Yeah. And if we go back in the beginning and we look and we examine uh, yeah. Abraham. Wait, 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 wait. Notice this though. Who fucked up the Holy Ghost? If we go back to that which he removed, he never changed their name. Mm. Adam was still Adam. All right. And Eve was still Eve. Yeah. Never changed. But when God got to the promise, baby, yeah. he changed the name. Yeah. Abram, you will no longer be called yeah. Abram. Because Abram identifies you with what? Idolatry. Yeah. When you were over there living with your father and all that mess. But since you're living with me now, yeah. I'm going to give you a new name. So listen to me. Mm -hmm. When God calls you, He does not call call you and leave you the same place. Mm -hmm. He changes your name. Yes. There was a man by the name of Saul, mm -hmm. and the Bible said Saul was one born out of due season, and he persecuted the Christians. Yeah. But the Bible said he did it out of ignorance. Yes. Yeah. But concerning yeah. the things of the law. Yeah. But when it came to the things of God, yeah. he was out of order. Mm. So the Bible said that Paul one day was traveling on the road to Damascus. Yes. And I come to tell you, I got 30 minutes. When you have <laughs> an encounter with God, yeah. you'll change your name. Yes, you will. Paul was traveling on the road headed toward 
God takes him and he changes his name. But in the midst of changing his name, something else happened. God caused him to grow up on his eyes. Yes. God can't let you see what you used to see. Yeah. He can't let you go wow. to the places you used to go to. All right. He can't let you be exposed to things that you do. So yeah. what did he do? He blinded him. Yeah. Yes. That's what God calls them a backslidden heifer. Yes. 
Amen. No matter what God did for them, they always turned Turn and went away from God. Yeah. Amen. So God said, this time, yeah. I'm going to allow the greatest enemy of you to take you in bondage. Mm. And not only did he take them in bondage, he took them in bondage for how many years? Forty, 40 years. years. Now, wait a minute. They should be familiar with the number 40. Yeah, all right. right. A four day journey because of their disobedience caused them what? 40 years. 40 years. They still ain't got it. Read. Oh. And there was a certain man of Zorah uh -huh. of the family of the Nineties. Yes. Whose name was Manoah. Uh -huh. And his wife was barren and very not. Here we go again. God needs someone without in order to produce Some. his plan. Somebody get let me, let me slow it down. God needs you to be down. Yes. Without. In order for him to produce his plan, promise that carries purpose. Yes. Did I lose you? Yes. I'm gonna say it again. God needs you to be void of everything in your life. Empty. Uh -huh. That's what the word sanctify means. It needs to be what? Hallowed out. God can put something in you and there's something there. In First Kings, in, in First Kings, the eighth chapter, the Bible says, or the fourth chapter, there was a woman of sin, and the Bible says that what she had lost everything, and then Obadiah, her husband, had died. Yeah. Now, when Obadiah died, the tax collector came to take her take children her because she couldn't do what? Pay her bill. Yeah. But God told her, "I want you to go get empty vessels." Yeah. Oh, she only had a little oil, but He said, "I want you to go collect all the empty vessels." The same thing she started with. God is a God of multiplication. He's not a God of subtraction. But you got to be empty. You got to be hollow. To pour in you. If you're not hollow, God can pour into you. So here we see a situation to where a husband who is renowned. But as we're going to see in the story, God does not deal with the husband. Come on. He deals with the wife. Read Verse number three. And the angel of the Lord. I want you to take note here. There's several things that's going to happen in this text. And most preachers and most individuals who are minister about teeth, they let it slide. But I don't want you to slide. I want to bring it to your attention. That's why we're going, oh, wow, time is fine. No worries. Take your time. So the, well, we're just going to give you this part. But what, we, what I want you to know is that the angel of the Lord, right? Yeah. The text is going to segue many times. Remember when we talked about the Sunday school, right? Said Jesus had never been here before, right? The man Jesus using that name that had never been here. But God had been here. Anytime you read in the Bible, the angel of the Lord, that's who? God. Yeah. And he appears in human flesh. Yeah. Read, watch this, read. Beginning again in three. Yes. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman. God. Said unto her, uh -huh. Behold now, thou art barren, and there is not. Uh -huh. But thou shalt conceive, and bear Listen, 
where you are right now, God placed you there. And God is the only one that can bring you out. Yeah. Whether it be good or bad, God placed you there. Yeah. But what I like about the text, it says this. They were put in bondage for 40 years. 40 years. But in the midst of bondage, God made a promise. Do you not know if you're in a position to where God wants to deliver you, use you, he'll send you something else. Mm. So here is this woman. This woman don't have a child. Could oh. you imagine she's been going all these years? Yeah.
what you call it for identification. What is it called? Station. Station identification. You got to come out Tuesday night to get the revelation. Mm. I can't, we only have two o'clock, I can't go anymore. But listen, throughout that text, there's something that you need to see. A lot of people say, well, Jesus was born on Mary, and that's the first time we've seen him. That's the first time we've seen the purpose. But the man, God, the God man had been here before. All throughout the Old Testament. Yes. And the Bible says that they offered up sacrifice to him. And he received it. Mm -hmm. Then he went back to heaven. Mm -hmm. Please come out Tuesday night, 7.30. If you don't come out Tuesday night, 7.30, you're going to miss it. You're going to go home and read this chapter. And say, oh, I got it. Okay, if you say so. Come out Tuesday night at 7.30. God is going to blow your wig backwards. <laughs> First lady said, don't blow my wig back. <laughs> brother, brother Dwight, you're going to blow your toupee back. <laughs> Listen, we love you very much. Amen. Over to your bride. Amen. 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 Amen.